Um, if your kid knows penny sla- penny-arcade.com, then like someone told him that, you know, th- there was no algo drive and the, the search engines were bad. You couldn't even search for shit because the search engines were like Ask Jeeves that wouldn't even turn up results. MapQuest would send you into literal f-ing lakes. People died. People died following on paper maps printed from the internet because they took the map too seriously and just drove off the road. The early 2000s were psychotic. forgot about the dick wolves yes the whole the whole thing is about um and it's not like that's like it's the, that's the joke but it's um if i hold on i'll just look it up yeah it's the whether or not you're making good decisions in video games and it says hero please take me with you release me from this hell unending every morning we are roused by savage blows every night we are raped asleep by the dick wolves i only needed to save five slaves all right quest complete but Hey pal, don't make me use. Hey pal, don't make this weird. <laughs> yeah, fucking dumbass comic from back in the day. They got excoriated for that. I forgot about it, but that's how bad shit was back in the day. That they got fucking like completely fucking attacked over it. I don't. Why I'm never going back to Penny X. Or, oh my god, bro, it's 2013. Why I let's just, fuck this, dude. Oh my god, we're getting into it. Let's go back in time. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, kids. Hop in the fail bus. We're going back in time. We're doing it. We're going back in time. <laughs> I remember this from Wired. Oh, why I'm never going back to PAX Penny Arcade Expo. Image Penny Arcade. It's gone now. They took down the comic. So all that's here is this picture. I had a really good time at PAX this year. I'm not saying the whole thing. I met up with friends. Who wrote this? Rachel. Rachel. That's cool. When's the last time you wrote something from 2014 and all your other shits about community? Fucking awesome. Holy fuck. Gee, dude, back at the, literally just rewinding the clock. Clean back to the clickbait era. Look at these fucking listicles. Listicles. Listicles, I tell you. The, uh, my, some of my professors, not all of them, some of my professors got mad when I scoffed at them that learning how to do listicles was asinine as shit. And it was going to go away in less than a year when I graduated in 2013. And I was like, okay, maybe it was a whole year. And then it went away. The six characters who could, who could join apocalypse in the next X-Men movie. Stellar new X-Men saves a franchise gone wrong. A fear-mongering anti-air RPG comic gets the film adaptation it deserves. Oh my lord, look at these. The minor league superhero who changed the face of fandom. Terrible. Just the worst, most god-awful. Who gives a shit? I can't believe we people used to read these. Fucking Sargon of Akkad has a fucking career right now because people would post this shit on me, these fucking op-eds. Because for a little while, from like 2010 to like 2015 ish, when before Facebook fully fucking cal- like cal- calcified and became Boomerland, um, you could a bunch of these. This is this is from the era of paid and clout, right? You're we're, you're gonna get paid in exposure. So more than likely, I highly doubt this person was paid for these. It was just like you can put your blog posts on our thing for free and then like we'll just boost you which you did get boosted and so like sargon of akkad and all those guys back in the day would just go read these official looking dog shit fucking stories that were basically just up jumped blog posts from uncertified non-journalists and like rip on them in bad fucking webcams and that is why we had gamergate one we went back in time like a motherfucker right now I th- I've never seen another fucking article from this lady. Never, not one, not one. She doesn't even have a fucking bio, bro. It's just this. This might not even be her picture. She went, she got a job 10 years ago and never came back to this, right? Writer for Wired was always, am I, am I to believe that a writer for, for Wired uh, said these things 
Of course. What else are we to expect from a games journalist? <laughs> fucking this fucking bullshit. Oh my lord. Dude, we're getting in here. We're getting in here. If the gaming community is going to keep moving forward, the time has come to leave PAX behind. What the fuck? Oh, dude. This is great. These are hard to find. These are the other kind of cringe opinions that existed back then that like the Gamergate fuckos like springboarded. But you used to have it used to have to be an effort post like this. Like this would get like reblogged or whatever on Tumblr like 10 billion fucking times to no fucking no fucking money return to the original author. And then eventually like it would hit Twitter and a bunch of people would call her literal slurs on Twitter in the DMs that you could not block people in. Until that person like just off to themselves or just died in the eyes of the internet. It was psychotic. And I was just like, you're not going to get me on your team. I thought the fuck it. I like, I understand the point of the joke. It was just kind of grimy. This is, this is actually, we're peeling, <laughs> peeling back the layers. This is what SJW shit was once upon a time. Like these are the people who stole the movement from the movement. It's fucking awesome. She's probably a perfectly normal person, probably just come, what, whoever. I don't care. I'll give her the full benefit of the doubt. She's just a normal, decent person that got really excited in like college and wrote some stupid shit, which is like 99% of all of these things. But fuck. Uh, let, 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 let's, let's read through this. I had a really good time at Penny X, uh, at PAX this year. I met up with friends and colleagues I rarely see in person. I rolled a lot of dice and pushed a lot of buttons, saw some really good live music and sat through some brilliant panels. I drank too much and slept too little. In a lot of ways, it was all the things I wanted a convention to be. Absolutely buried the fucking lead. I also decided finally and for sure that I'm not going back to PAX again. Not as an attendee, not as a professional, not as press. On Monday, in the last hours of the four-day show, Mike Krahulik, the artist of the webcomic Penny Arcade and co-founder of PAX, decided to dredge up the Dick Wolves. <laughs> yeah, Dick Wolves is even further back than this. That's right. Um... And something that had been building up for a long time finally snapped. Here's some quick context. In 2010, three years before this article was written, Penny Arcade posted a comic strip that involved a character described describing being raped to sleep by dick wolves. The rape joke wasn't the point of the strip. It was an illustration of the screwed up ethics implied by the quests in video games like World of Warcraft, where after a player has rescued, say, five hostages or slaves, there's no real impetus and sometimes no mechanic to save any of the others. Yeah, it's it's fucking it, it's it's also a, it's a fucking web comic, you know. It is what it is. I guess it, it, this is also the transition where like Penny Arcade was becoming permanently the PAX guys, as opposed to when I was in high school, they were just Penny Arcade, you know, like a comics books artist, and they just turned into this massive juggernaut kind of like overnight, and everyone knew about Penny Arcade. Everybody still does, and they had at one time. <clears throat> like six fucking comics going off of their main site. They had a fucking reality TV show. Do you guys remember this? Penny Arcade had a fucking reality TV show to become the next great like comics artist. Um, and it turned into a show about some kids at a, uh, or a comic about some kids at a, at a summer camp where it was kind of implied that all the kids had like died before getting sent there or something. Um, and, and I don't even know if they even make it anymore. <clears throat> but like a lot of people are like, you guys are pros now and you, you do Penny Arcade and Penny Arcade became the best game in Expo. It basically replaced E3 and turned into, I think there's three PAXs, maybe more now. It used to be just PAX, PAX, and then they created PAX East because they're from the West Coast, if I remember correctly. And now, the, now there's like a PAX Central, whatever, the Central America. All, they're all over the place. Jesus Christ. Whether or not the strip was offensive isn't really relevant at this point. Absolutely still is. More than the comic itself, what made the most impact was how Penny Arcade responded to the readers, including rape survivors who said it upset them. First, they mocked their critics with a series of posts and a flippant non-apology. Does this click to link to anything? Breaking it down. Oh my gosh, it does. Hello, this is Tycho Brahe of Tent Penny Arcade. We recently made a comic strip. We recently made a comic strip where an imaginary person was raped imaginarily by a mytho mythological creature whose every limb was an erect phallus. We some found that idea disturbing. <laughs> we want to state in clear language without any ambiguity or room for interpretation. We hate rapers and all the rapes they do. Seriously, though, rapists are really the worst. It's possible that you read our cartoon and became a rapist as a direct result. If you're raping someone right now, stop, apologize, and leave. Go and rape no more. Yeah. 
uh, Upsetty Spaghetti Phase, which was what people fucking like literally unironically wanted from them at the time. It was crazy. Uh, series of posts uh, so we make a strip demonstration in a subsequent make a strip demonstration of Pax Prime Krahulik furly, further needled the issue by drawing a dick wolf and Penny Arcade even monetized the discomfort over it by making and selling team dick wolves shirts and pennants I can't <laughs> the absolute fucking the absolute baseness of it is, is insane because it's impossible it's, impo- it's the most in profane thing of all time who is going to wear the Dick Wolf shirt? Someone said that to me earlier today about um, I don't want to. I have streamer merch, but I don't want to wear it because the streamers are too cringe, and I don't want people to know I'm I'm there. I'm like I'm part of it. Like it feels like it'll be too direct. I'm like I get that. I get that. The thought that people bought the Dick Wolf shirt and ever wore it out. This is what it looked like because it still just says Dick Wolves on it. It just says Penny Arcade Dick Wolves. Fuck it. Stupidest shit ever. But it was a fucking, this is back on the internet when the internet was like not real. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like 2010 to 2014 was a whole like, like it just, everything was different. Like this is back when um, f- people were still going around in Guy Fox masks and dancing in front of the fucking Church of Scientology and shit. It was, it was crazy. Like the internet was stupid and it was becoming real. And like people like, what I'm a, fu-, like people just didn't even get it. Like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you who's mad at penny arcade like literally no one except for the people that you're sharing shit with to get them mad at penny arcade like it's it's madness is it probably too much yes is it the funniest joke ever made absolutely not can the world exist without it sure but like i really just i I really just check chalk it up to like hey whatever you know what i mean They, they they took a shot at it and they fucked it up i don't think they need to get taken out like over it and it's also not their main comic like penny arcade by 2010 had been around for whatever like 12 fucking years or some shit and was they they made a comic three times fucking a week right so the dude just kind of said whatever he said in his head and he described literally what he thought would be the worst possible thing ever you know what i mean uh i'm not I, am i defending the comic sure why the fuck, fuck okay all right fine i don't care but like the reaction to it is so over the top and stupid and you have to actually get people, you have to drag people who would not understand Penny Arcade to Penny Arcade to get mad at it. You know what I mean? Which is wild because it wasn't even in a position where it's like, this is back when they didn't even have like real advertisements or they did have some advertisements on the sides, but it was like, there was no like real Patreon and stuff. There wasn't really like a Kickstarter and all that sort of thing. You know, there wasn't like, algorithms like if you watched penny arcade it's because you actively fucking went to penny arcade every fucking week or had it in an rss feed or something to check it out so like being mad at penny arcade in 2010 is not like being mad at somebody in 2014 where it was like okay this is up on like modern twitter where there's a rage and an outrage economy and stuff and like people are taking sides over stuff Twitter was there. I think it might have been the first year of Twitter or, or it was it was very new. You know what I mean? Like we're only a couple years after fucking like Facebook. And so just algorithmic explosions and stuff and like true virality was brand new and it was truly like insane. Like viral back then was still like this is a picture of a dog eating a biscuit. No one knows why it's fucking big, but it is it is literally the largest thing on earth. You know what I mean? It's just crazy looking back on it. Early 2000s internet was the best internet. Take it all the way back to like fucking take it all the way back to the, you know, the seventies or whatever. It was just fucking like calm chat. You can only talk to people through a radio waves. I have a Medicare four star hat, but no one knows what it's a reference to. Wow. I, somebody, I, I was in the president's Sunday. I was in president Sunday's chat and someone called Medicare a glorified hat salesman. And I was like, that is fucking rough. The four star hats kind of slap. They they really do. They look kind of cool. Uh, one of my dipshit old bosses has a fucking four star hat that he took a picture in. He's not as big as Medicare, which is triply hilarious. Medicare would probably fucking not like the guy. Actually, what if Medicare would like me? I don't think so. Maybe I don't know. I would like to make fun of him until he got like huffy because I know he's like a bigger dude. So I, I just imagine if he got mad at me, he'd like uh, start shaking and he'd turn all pink. <laughs> uh. 
Honestly, that comic is probably the least offensive thing I've seen on the internet. As far as things that are offensive on the internet as well, by the way, in 2010, like, this is crazy. The Iraq war was still on. Like, we, we, we hadn't, we, this was around the time we killed bin Laden. So, like, you could also just get off the internet that day and just see pictures of, like, dead American service members. Like, you know what I mean? Like, up on the screen. Watch the latest accidental bombing. They just watch people getting murdered and stuff. Ogreish was still probably pretty much around in 2010. Uh, guys I knew were just coming back from. We're just coming back from um, Afghanistan. Uh, that was this was the year. This is the year. 2010 is the year after I got out of the Marine Corps. My first year of college. So like that's how far back we are. More people protested, and some companies and speakers began making noise about pulling out of PAX Prime. Finally, the Dick Wolves merchandise was removed. Probably just because it says Dick Wolves. <laughs> Kruholik made it clear that he objected to the decision to stop selling the merchandise and would be wearing his Dick Wolves shirt at PAX to <laughs> illustrate the point, even though he knew the Dick Wolves and the sentiment they expressed made many potential attendees feel uncomfortable and safe. Potential attendees. I'll be wearing mine to PAX. Old, ancient. Is this even Twitter? Yeah, I guess it is because it says retweet. God, let's look different. Retweeted by Team Rape. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, the old internet. If you are like, if you're one of the sneaky fucks that are in my fucking stream right now, and you are like, I know somebody said they were 19, too young. Uh, but even if you're like 23, 24, and you're like, I've been on the internet. You have not, you motherfucker. You don't even know. You were 10. You 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 were in your little fucking uh, iPad one, and and your Minecraft that wouldn't even connect to the internet. You don't know shit, okay? You fucking child, you rube, you infant, <laughs> motherfucker. Not only mo is the motherfucker's uh, screen name on Twitter Team Rape. It doesn't even have a number after it. He got the first usage of the word Team Rape. What the fuck? Old internet, man. It was crazy. This was mild, mild, mild shit. Oh my God, that's fucking insane. <sighs> that is, it is fuck psychotic. Dude, the old internet is insane. This is the breeding ground for the contentious atmosphere that led to Gamergate, right? Which I, I kind of do over kind of expand, but it's really Gamergate, the it's really just the alt right, the resurgence there or the the not even resurgence, but the 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 inception, the inception of the alt right came from this era of people of people who the the disconnect isn't that anyone because here let me explain a little bit um about why this is crazy. Why, 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 why it was weird at the time. On one hand, you have people whose camp I was in, like making filthy, raunchy, disgusting jokes on the internet, which is what you used the internet for in a general sense. Like it, the internet was like, everybody told you like the internet is for being gross on. Don't be the internet's unsafe. The internet's dangerous. The internet is like literally like a back alley. And you would just hang out there and do illegal shit and talk shit and do fucking uncouth, like, unacceptable things on the internet. Say insane things for a laugh. Do all kinds of grimy shit. Now, if you were smart and you knew, like, you're from, like, the chans and stuff, you would just be like, okay, well, it's, it's anonymous. I would never do this. I would never say something that's stupid in real life because of all of the consequences to me and other people, you know? Internet is internet. It's kind of like, back then, you would just articulate it as... Well, some people play like video games, but they don't actually go out and kill people. It was that argument, the same one that still comes up to this day. The other people were the ones that were kind of entering the new version of like the safety pads internet. The, the internet that makes any of us have any money is from that side. Consumerist internet, which was a massive swath of new users who were not used to shit here and not used to people being accommodating to them saying you're making me uncomfortable is really what it boils down to. And them exploding because they don't understand internet etiquette, which is like block and ignore, right? Do you remember in like the mid 2010s when like normies started finding out that like ignoring people and blocking them was just like par for the course. And then they were like, I just block and ignore people. Like they had just discovered the wheel, you know, in 2020 or 2015 or some shit. 
it was it was wild right but like that's really what it was they didn't know how internet worked they didn't know to, about blocking people they didn't know about like cutting stuff off they would just get online and they'd be like i just i demand that the internet be as nice to me as any other consumer space that i go into and it just wasn't but there was a lot of people that saw the possibility of like uh, you know giving consumers what they wanted and ad money started pouring the fuck in because of ad buys and so you would have this you had this big massive push basically shouldering out the people who were who were already there being very comfortable in the space in ways that were probably fairly unethical and at a lot of times gross or just uncouth you know like penny arcade penny arcade could have made that dick wolves joke in 2003 and no one would have heard it would have it would have been just dust in the wind because back then the punchline for like 25% of maybe more like 60% of jokes on the internet and IRL in 2003 was just calling someone the F slur. And that was the entire, there was whole movies, whole movies in the early 2000s where people who are famous, you know, their names. Now the entire point of the movie was just them calling other people, the F slur in different like ways, you know what I mean? Or just being a guy who everyone thought was like gay, like that. And that would be the entirety of the comedy. You know what I mean? Poop jokes, fart jokes, and, and, and homophobia was kind of like it. And so the internet as all these kids learned from that. They built up like little tiny empires of notoriety that were not algo driven. They were not algo driven. It was all word of mouth. So it wasn't even something where you're like, I can't believe they're saying this on the internet where kids could find it. It'd be like, how the fuck does that kid know how to find 4chan? You have to know the name of it. You know what I mean? Like if your kid knows 4chan.org, you're not taking care of them. Um, if your kid knows penny sla penny hyphen arcade.com, then like someone told him that, you know, th there was no algo drive and the, the search engines were bad. You couldn't even search for shit because the search engines were like Ask Jeeves that wouldn't even fucking turn up results. MapQuest would send you into literal fucking lakes. People died. People died following on paper maps printed from the internet because they took the map too seriously and just drove off the road. The early 2000s were psychotic. And it was like, no, the internet's dangerous. It's mostly just pedophiles and weirdos. And then all of the fucking pedos and weirdos were like, yeah, well, the weirdos were like, we don't like the pedos. They're over there in their fucking little corner. We'll call that 8chan or whatever the fuck at the moment. And all the weirdos were like, we are weird. Is there anyone else that wants to talk about Warhammer? Because oh, this is the only place I can find people like, yes, I want to talk about Warhammer and I want to say slurs. Can you stop saying the slurs so much? Maybe. And that was the like handshake of the early internet. And it was dangerous and it was gross. It was completely unmonetizable by anyone except for almost every single thing. This is a thing. You might remember this. If you're old on the internet and you remember people having like literal websites that were like GeoCities and like Z.com and shit, the people would sell fucking underwear. One of the first print on demand companies out there sold two things, t-shirts and women's fucking thongs. I don't know why, but almost every fuck comic books, artists, uh, bands, um, uh, random, just web pages, you know, back in the day, you'd have the Webby awards and stuff. They would almost all have like a merch area that would have a t-shirt with their logo on it. And then a fucking woman, woman's thong with like with just a little patch with their logo on it. It was just stupid. I think fucking penny arcade sold penny arcade underwear for a little while. And like, that was the internet. All of these consumers came in and when the money came in, the money dominated the landscape immediately because like if you're a hosting provider, you're like, okay, who are you hosting right now? Like I am hosting a lot of people that are on an FBI watch list. Let me just tell you that right now. Like, okay, can we give you five fucking more dollars a month? And, uh, we're just going to run a site that just does nothing but sell fucking like illegal products from China. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it kind of went up from there. And so like all the bandwidth started getting taken over by these fucking social media companies and people like them because the algos were good. The algos did something that you had been trying to do on the internet the entire time, which was find good content. And you could actually just bypass message boards, talking to weirdo fucks on the internet, bad recommendations, and just get fucking on the internet and stuff would come to you. That was good. And when that started mixing with people that didn't want to see shit, it created a fucking like a literal chemical reaction on the internet that we're still experiencing the after effects of today. The commercialization of the internet was 
inevitable from the get-go. And for the most part, good. Because it definitely put a lot of light on and scattered the cockroaches that were manifesting everywhere. But like also, it created a gigantic conflict that people took advantage of from 2010 literally to the Trump election. I know this isn't maybe necessarily in your country, but it is. Um, where disaffected young men in college and high school and stuff that had their one space that was like really for them because they're not rich. You know what I'm saying? Most of these are like working class people. They don't have a lot of hobbies and they don't understand like third places and the, 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 the concept of like race and difficulty of other people's lives isn't something that's like forefront with them. They're like, I don't say the N word. That's how I know I'm not racist. Like, uh, cause I know a lot of people that do and they also like fucking are just, they hate black people and they say it all the time. So like, that's like the call. That's like, I know I'm not racist. Anti-racism was like a niche thing in certain colleges. If you knew about it, congratulations. You you grew up somewhere cool where people got jobs like doctors and lawyers and shit. I grew up where fucking people were like, you got an auto mechanic in your family? You fucking rich, motherfucker. Like, yeah, yeah, all right. You know, you know it is what it is. Like, that's, that's the fucking, that's the vibe, right? And so those people got pushed out of their space and got fucking pissed about it because a lot of the people pushing them out of their spaces didn't know how to articulate the ideas that they were fucking shoving in people's faces effectively. And so that's why the skeptics who started off as like, because people ask me to explain this, skeptics started off as doing something that was novel and you could only kind of do on the internet safely, especially in a lot of America, which would be like, fucking fuck Jesus. I don't give a shit. Fuck Jesus. You know, you can say that online now and you'll probably be generally pretty okay. You might get some spurgs here and there. But like back then... You could say that in public and actually probably get like attacked or jumped and shit. We didn't have cameras fucking everywhere. Camera phones weren't a thing until like the 2010s, you know what I mean? Um, like where everyone kind of had one. You, you could get fucking, you could, people threw fucking Molotovs into people's houses and shit and bricks and stuff. Like it was dangerous as fuck in the 1990s to talk too much shit. Um, but you could do it on the internet and people are like, oh, that's crazy. You know, like, I've never seen somebody and you would not get airtime. You did not get airtime on TVs. Well, all of a sudden, you could have a fucking full audience of interested people if you were fucking TJ Kirk, um, the Banana King himself, and you're just like, you know what? If you ever seen old TJ Kirk videos where he has his beard and stuff, it's him literally in his house, quite possibly coming off of a like uh, like a Reddit fucking meme comic about like you know he just walked past some Christian couple that looked fine and he's just losing his mind. I just fucking hate Jesus. People talk about Jesus, but he's not fucking real. Like this this the whole fucking thing, you know? And it is what it is. But once that like they gained audiences for that and there's only so much mileage you can get out of like probably God's not real because probably God's not real. Um till you have to like maybe talk about something else. And then all of a sudden monetization, money Platforms you could get paid from all showed up basically right at the same time as people getting kicked out of their original spaces by freaked out college students who were very, very emotionally attached to um, causes that they were personally affected by or that they've personally felt responsible for or close to who really wanted to make a difference. And now they had a platform too. And so they said, you all need to stop doing stuff. And then the people that were already there said, y'all need to fucking be more respectful and shut the fuck up. Cause we were here first. And that, I just made that whole back and forth about 10,000 times more civil than it actually was. Mostly it was slurs and attempts at new versions of slurs that weren't actually slurs being hurled back and forth for fucking literally half a decade basically at increasingly more intense intervals as people found out that generally actually most people in the public kind of don't like hypersexual jokes all the time. Actually, most women actually legitimately really are fucking weirded out by untoward comments to their bodies. Actually, a lot of black people do not like hearing about all of the other black people that you know and how they're cool with the words that you say in front of them at work. And, you know, so like this whole thing started to settle out, but that wasn't going in. That wasn't until like post like 2015, 2016, all the time, this alt-right movement, which is always there. Um, Stormfront ops were always a known thing on 4chan back in the day because you would have random racists come in and try to do like racist fucking meme shit. And you'd be like, all right, whatever the fuck. Stormfront Nazis can go fucking kill themselves all over and over again. You know, hey, fucking case slurs, whatever, hammering it home. 
Uh, but all of a sudden, they had like a much bigger platform, and they were being funded for the first time because people like the Koch brothers and other fucking dark money interests went like, holy shit, the internet's full of fucking assholes, and a lot of them can vote. Let's fucking pour money into that. And then you see careers like fucking Ben Shapiro's just literally... Ben Shapiro just got fucking astroturfed into existence. If you look at the early history of Ben Shapiro, it was clearly not him just working from his house. It was a whole media organization that was put behind this fucking absolute dipshit so that he could go rip on college kids who represented the people that were being really fucking irritating from Twitter. And people would go like, hey, I fucking love that. Let's let's just open the door to your conversations that you want to have. And even the skeptics and stuff were letting them into their community, not realizing that they were all just a bunch of Christo fascists, Christo fascists and fucking normal fascists and racists and stuff that wanted to push their alt-right, which is just, hey, we're doing the fuck. Alt-right is literally just, literally just a departure from 2000s era Bush conservatism and Tea Party conservatism, which was conservative reconstruction, non-corporate, re, non-corporate conservative reconstruction, basically, of the party into idealistic mora- moral policing, basically, from the internet. That was like what the purpose of the alt-right was. First off, all of the things that the SJWs are saying are trying to destroy white men on the internet. They're trying to kill us, and that's dangerous. And once you get somebody to say yes to that, the yes and, the yes and, uh, is just, hey, but also white men are very important to the world and white men are going to lead the world forward and white men are the reason that even half of these fucking ignorant backwards pieces of slur, 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 and like it just goes down in the putt. But the thing is, is you can fucking lead in. And it took decade, like a half a decade, maybe a little bit more really, for not only that to settle, but for people like really like H-Bomber guy specifically and even Destiny, shout out him back in the day, to even just hit these guys like a fucking brick wall and be like, what in the fuck are you talking about? Like, what What do you mean? What? What? Why don't you believe in global warming? Are you fucking stupid? Like, you just sound like any other conservative politician. Well, I'm not a conservative politician. I'm just like you. I, I'm just another guy. I'm another man. I'm a red-blooded man. Just I'm just concerned with things. That were, I'm just concerned. I'm just asking questions. And like their entire thing over basically from like 2017, dude, like Trump was... Trump was a big thing on the internet. If you guys don't really remember, that was a like, oh, it's not a joke anymore. And then from 2016 to 2020 was just every year a different tier of people who are like, no, it's just memes. It's just jokes. It's just funny. We're like, God damn. Well, they did run that bitch down at the fucking white supremacist rally. And they did have a white supremacist rally, which was fucking crazy. Full of young people. Not like old Hilljack fucking assholes from Indiana who are creeping across the border into Cincinnati to try to get attention. Like this is like college students, people that are not going to fortunately die in the next 20 years because they're out of age, like young people, kids and shit. And then you can't fucking ignore it. And then it got worse and then it got worse. And then we Jan 16 and now it's or January 6th, like, you know, uh, up to that. And so now it's this thing where you're looking back like, holy fuck, like some, a few interested people really took advantage of this situation and turned it completely fucking inside out. But like that's that's what happened. That this is how you get from Penny Arcade Dick Wolves controversy to Donald Trump getting elected. I know it's not like a direct, you know, that's the small domino, but unironically, it's all part of the same ecosystem and it all goes there. So like the main point of even bringing this up is A, I love history. Um, and I lived it, but also B. Never think that like these small, tiny things that you're ignoring or even your overreactions, your, your, your overreactions, your emotionally, um, exuberant, like, I don't give a fuck how I sound. I just want to say a thing. Never think that that's not going to cause problems just because what you're shouting for is right. Cause you might oversell yourself and be these Hamas pro Hamas psychopaths on the fucking left are the same people that provided the path forward to the alt-right back in 2010 to 2014. They're the same type of people. They're just younger and maybe don't understand it. Some of them are literally the same people. Some of them in the people in this conversation, it's just Brianna Wu again, back somehow, uh, back on the block, um, doing dumb shit. And you can actually fucking oversell it and permanently damage the reputation of your own movement by sounding like a fucking psychopath and providing a situation where someone can just go click, take a snapshot of you and be like, look, this represents the entirety of the movement. 
This is who they are. It's this one fucking psycho who says, I don't give a shit how many fucking settler babies die. They shouldn't have been there in the first place. And it's like, dude, you can't come out for dead babies. You just can't. You, you, you can't do it. <laughs> you just can't come out on behalf of dead babies. Like, you just don't do it. Just, <laughs> there's no argument. I'm trying to, I'm racking my brains for a, for a butt, but there is none. Um, and that's, that's like, that's one of my Tyler's history of the modern internets. I love that. That, that Stimlock can be a, uh, shout out editors. That Stimlock can for sure be a fucking, for sure. That's actually probably one of the best little, um, segments that I'll ever Stimlock into existence. But hope you enjoyed your time on the west side.